just decades ago, holograms were a futuristic daydream of sci-fi cinema. But in the near future, digital technology could bring holograms straight into your home. First, a crash course in holography. In 1801, Thomas Young conducted the infamous double slit experiment by shining a light through two thin gaps. The light then spread out, a phenomenon known as diffraction, proving light travels as a wave and the waves can interfere with one another. Thanks to this discovery, optic science became hugely popular throughout the 19th century and by 1947, holography started to take shape. Hungarian Nobel Prize winning physicist Denis Gabor is often credited as a pioneer of holography. In 1948, Gabor was working on improving the quality of electron microscopy. However, at the time, coherent light sources such as lasers were simply not available, meaning that he had to align all his equipment along one axis, leading to poor quality. Thanks to the invention of the laser in the 1960s, interest in holography took off again. It now had the coherent light source which guaranteed the all-important interference effects required for high-quality images. So, why use holograms? Normal photography uses the ray aspect of light and captures what is essentially a slice of the image contained in the ray. Without a known reference in the image, you don't know how big or far away the objects in the picture are. But holograms utilise the fact that light also travels as a wave so the amplitude and phase of the light waves are also captured in the image. These two components of light provide additional information and allow a 3D reconstruction of a scene. Thanks to Lethan Opatnik's off-axis holography in the 1960s, scientists have been able to create analog 3D holograms on plates for decades. While analog images have a spectacular resolution with pixel sizes of 100 nanometers, the images still need to be developed using chemical and physical means. The obvious step forward is to digitise the process. Digital holograms could be displayed on television or computer screens. However, the best resolution a current digital hologram can boast is several thousand times worse than analogue due to the much larger pixel sizes. The first challenge lies in the current capability of spatial light modulators, or SLMs, Devices that can manipulate light and compose the display. The diffraction of light is key for these devices. The supported size of viewing cone, the diffraction angle, is dependent on the wavelength of the light used and the pixel size. Should the pixel size be half the size of the wavelength, 180 degree 3D view becomes feasible. The next hurdle is processing the image. Computer generated holography, CGH, is much more calculation intensive than classic image rendering. Each point in the scene can potentially affect every hologram pixel and vice versa. This many-to-many -many relationship compounded with the large hologram resolutions is too costly to compute by brute force. Then there's the problem of the digital image itself. Holograms are not normal images, so new types of coding techniques need to be developed to handle the multitude of issues. Take the interference patterns caused by the many pixels that affect one another. Resolving these interactions in a live video stream is one of the biggest obstacles to overcome. On top of this, checks have to be done to ensure the image quality is great. All these challenges are being tackled head-on by the Department of Electronics and Informatics of VUB and IMEC. The team's work means digital holography could one day be a part of our everyday lives.